I'm Jeffrey Meyer. I head the Neurochemical Imaging Program in Mood Disorders here at the ChemH Research Imaging Center. My personal experiences that led me to mental health started actually before I went into medical school. I was looking for summer work in a hospital and when I applied to the local hospitals, the hospital that picked up my application was a mental health hospital. And when I went to work there, I was moved by the experiences of the people that I was dealing with and the stories that I would read in the mental health hospital library and it really made me feel like maybe there was a role for me to work in research and mental health at that time. We know that half of people who have clinical depressions don't respond adequately to treatment. And probably the reason is that we miss the targets that are important in the brain. So one person might talk about symptoms that they have and it might reflect one change in the brain, whereas somebody else may have the same symptoms but a different brain change. So with the brain imaging tools that I use, I've had a great opportunity to look at how brain chemistry changes and how that relates to people getting ill. Uh, one example would be recently found that brain inflammation occurs in the midst of people who have a clinical depression. It may be in 20 to 50 percent of people. At the same time as doing this brain scanning, I've looked at measures in the blood and I found a, a blood measure that looks promising to tell us when the brain is having inflammation. So it may be that in the future what happens is that you go to your doctor's office if you haven't responded to say treatment for your clinical depression, you try the blood test and if the blood test you have, says you have inflammation, you take a medication to make the inflammation go away and that might help the depression symptoms go away. So back in the mid-2000s, I was fortunate to discover that this protein, it's called MAOA, this protein is elevated in the midst of the brain in, in clinical depression in most people. And what we've done now is to look at, are there situations in which people um, in their environment might be predisposed to acquiring this change in the brain? And so one example is an early postpartum. So around day five postpartum, there's a 40% rise in this protein in the brain, uh, which we discovered in 2010. And so from this, the question is, well, can we do something about that? Is that something that might put risk for getting a postpartum depression? So in the meantime, I've developed with my colleagues um, a supplement that is intended to uh, prevent postpartum depression. And now we're testing the supplement to see if it prevents sadness in early postpartum, because sadness in early postpartum is associated with risk for a full level clinical depression later. And so far in the work that's been done to date, it seems to be completely eliminating the sadness in early postpartum. We can use brain imaging to see whether uh, treatments reach the brain to the level that they're supposed to. And the point of that was that rather than giving lots of people medications that were inappropriate in dose for developing a new treatment, they use the scanning to decide the right dose at the starting point. And so that speeds up the ability to make new cures and it also um, allows that people who are going into these studies are getting a more optimal treatment rather than getting perhaps a dose that has no benefit at all for them. What is the significance of the Dr. Samarth Lal Award for Mental Health Research? Uh, that has impact for me in several ways. One of them is that it's the strongest psychiatric research award in Canada for mid-career scientists in mental health. So when a committee Unif uh, unanimously agrees on supporting me for that award, I, I take that as, as, as a major compliment. Dr. Lal had a reputation for being very honorable, a very highly academically productive, and also was a clinician scientist. So I'm touched that, that the award has, has come my way this year, and uh, I'm sure that my uh, former supervisor will be as well when he, when he hears of it. 